Tesla's change to using 48 volt is way more significant than people realize. And it's for two big reasons. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. Great to see you. Thank you for tuning in. My name is Sam Evans coming to you from Thailand at the moment. And just want to say a big welcome to all the new subscribers to the channel. Great to have you. Tesla is moving away from 12 volt battery system to 48 volt. This will change the entire architecture of the car. It's a pretty big change, really. In fact, cars have been running on a 12 volt architecture now for forever. So it's strange that it's taken this long for anyone to come along and say, well, actually, there is a better way to do this. This is what it is. And this is why it actually matters. Tesla's 48 volt low voltage system in its cars will start with the Cybertruck after they actually start producing the Cybertruck, it'll be in its newer cars. So the new Model 2, the Model A, that'll have a 48 volt system as well. Will they change the Model Y and the Model 3 to have 48 volt? No, they won't. It's probably never gonna happen unless they have a completely new model and they just call it a Model Y and they make a completely new model from scratch. That's extremely unlikely. So this will just be Tesla's new models, not their existing models. It's too hard to re-engineer a whole car to change it from 12 volt to 48 volt. At least that's what I believe. According to Elon Musk, doing this will significantly reduce the copper in the car. And this will do two things. It'll have two very, very positive effects. So how do we know Tesla plans on doing this? Well, at their shareholder meeting on the 16th of May, Musk gave several updates on the company's development and their upcoming plans. One of them was this, and I think most people didn't really pay a whole lot of attention to going from 12 volt to 48 volt. It doesn't really sound all that exciting, but it actually it is very significant. Musk talked about how a new low voltage system will bring significant changes in the amount of copper needed for the car. This will have a dramatic effect on the company's demand for copper. Copper's not cheap. It's actually a pretty expensive material. So obviously less copper means less cost. Trying to reduce the cost, it may not seem that significant just by having, say, 30 kilos, 40 kilos less copper in a car, but actually it all adds up. Because if you can save this much in one area, save this much in another area, before you know it, all those cost savings start to combine to mean you can offer a lower cost product than your competition. And that's the key idea here. This is what Musk said. Cars have been operating with 12 volt batteries for about a century. So for the first time, I think in over 100 years, we're actually going to change from 12 volt outside of the drivetrain to a 48 volt architecture. In traditional 12 volt systems, Tasmanian says that wiring and components have to be larger and heavier to withstand the high electrical loads. However, with a 48 volt system, Tesla expects to reduce the weight and save on materials. This should lead to less use of copper in its cars. It should also lead to less weight. I mean, obviously an EV, if it's say 40 kilos less weight, still the same battery, you're gonna slightly increase the range. That's another benefit of it. So you're gonna get a bit of a range increase. You're gonna get lower cost to produce the car and you're gonna get less wear and tear on everything, but just by reducing the weight in one area. Now, if you wanna reduce the weight in one area, the whole philosophy here is, hey, why stop with one area? Let's, let's do this area, let's do that area, let's make an exoskeleton, let's actually try and improve every single part of the car in terms of the weight reduction. So it's really just part of Tesla's strategy here. How do we improve on everything? Elon Musk gave a surprising figure though when he said how much copper Tesla can actually lose or reduce from the car by doing this. I'm not really, I'm not really sure this is 100% correct, but if it is, these numbers are pretty amazing. He said, first approximation. That means we only need about a quarter as much copper in the car as would be needed for a 12 volt battery. So that's a big deal because people often worry about whether there is enough copper. Musk said, yes, there is enough. Um, and to first approximation, that, that means we need only about a quarter as much copper for, uh, in, in, the, in the car as would be needed for a 12 volt uh, battery. So that's a big deal. Because people are often worried about, you know, is there enough copper? Yes, there is. This copper issue is way bigger than it sounds. And the key reason for this is Tesla wants to make 20 million cars a year. So if you do the numbers here, that means Tesla needs 1,820,000 tons of copper every single year. That's insane because that is nearly 10% of global copper production. 
just going into Tesla's cars. You can see why it's so important to reduce the amount of copper they use. Because the more Tesla use, that'll actually drive prices up. So copper is pretty expensive today. Imagine how expensive it'll be when Tesla's taking up 10% of the entire world production. You can see why Tesla's really thought this through, why they've decided, yeah, yeah, you know, we need to focus on how we can have less copper in the car. So if it's true that Tesla can reduce the copper by 75%, then that would mean their copper use would be reduced by 1.3 million tons, which is $10 billion in today's dollars. I mean, it could be even more by the time 2030 rolls around and there's a lot more need for copper because more EVs mean more copper. So the price could be doubled by that. You could be looking at a $20 billion in today's dollars in 2030. That is massive. I mean, if you made $20 billion in profit in a quarter or in a year, that's still a pretty good year for most companies. A Tesla motor weighs around 45 kilos. Around 20 kilos of that is copper. Now, if you've got a dual motor version of the car, you're looking at 40 kilograms. If you've got the tri-motor version, either the plaid or the basically the tri-motor version of the Cybertruck or even the quad version, you could be looking at a saving of a full 80 kilograms or about 170 pounds worth of copper. That's massive. You can see how this is very, very significant. Let me know your thoughts though in the comments. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.